Perfect, and good morning and welcome to Unity of Las Cruces virtual Sunday service celebration. It's really great to see everyone. And um, I am Kay Brilliant and I am the prayer chaplain for Unity of Las Cruces. And I'm going to ask Tanya to do our spiritual reading for today. Take it away, Tanya. Good morning, thank you, Kay. And I'd like to invite everyone to use their imagination to uh, imagine themselves in perfect healing using the power of imagination. Uh, this uh, Sunday, like the other Sundays in May, our topic uh, of uh, is, and theme is power, one of the 12 powers. And I have uh, something from, again, this beautiful book from uh, Catherine Ponder. And... <clears throat> She talks about uh, blessing the, the different powers. And one of the things that she says is to be loving and gentle with them. And so what I'd like to, to uh, imagine us is, is a blessing each and every power, each and every one of the 12 powers with the power of power. So it, it, here we go. Let's start with faith in the pineal gland at the center of the head. And then we go to strength at the small of the back justice at the pit of the stomach, love at the heart, power at the root of the tongue, imagination between the eyes, will and understanding in the front forehead, order at the back of the navel, zeal at the base of the brain, elimination at the base of the spinal column, and life in the generation, generative functions of the lower abdomen. Thank you, Catherine Ponder, and we'll take that with us today. And every day. Thank you, Back Tanya. To you, Kay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Tanya. Um, and it, all of our reading and all of the things that we study are all usable. So we just have to remember to put them in our daily lives. So again, welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, where God is good all of the time, and all are welcome, safe, and loved. Today's talk, our lesson will be brought by Helen Wright, our spiritual leader, and her topic is, what is your superpower? And we've already been asked where her cape is, and it always makes me think about all of the um, wonderful cartoon characters who had superpowers. Who knew we had them too? And our music will be brought today by Barry Shaw and Mac Max Contreras, and the song that he's singing today is called Superman. So I'm anxious to hear uh, what they've done with that song. And now we have good news. Ken? Good morning, everybody. I just want to share this little tidbit here. Uh, this was kind enough to be sent out to me by Helen, right? Who was, uh, found, it, found some really neat things here. This particular thing is from CNN and a little thing they call the good stuff. And a wildlife photographer um, was updating an outdated term of hopefully most of you have heard of a phrase called the big five. And this used to be some of the things that and the different animals that people were collecting as trophies. And unfortunately, some of those are still actively being pursued and, and hunted. However, this new uh, British photographer, Graham Green, set out to redo the big five, but in a methodology for taking pictures. And they did a year long survey with over 50,000 entries and they came up with five, the big five from a photographic standpoint and they are the elephants, lions, and now with gorillas, tigers and polar bears are all the big five that everybody wants to see a picture of because they're so really big and awesome to see in the wild. Um, all of these five are on the critically endangered, endangered right. vulnerable lists and this will hopefully bring more education, appreciation in life for those particular animals, as well as others that may be considered in, in the future for other Big Five editions. All right, thank you very much, and back to you. Oh, thank you, Ken, and thank you, Helen, for the submission. I want to remind everybody that um, you can send your recommendations for good news to Ken via our email address, unitylascruces at gmail.com, attention Ken Warner. And we look forward to your good news, what you find. And please join us in our moment of gratitude. We, all of us, are Unity of Las Cruces. 
And we're grateful for everyone who enlivens our church, including those who work behind the scenes. Those of you who attend either on Zoom or later on through YouTube, and we are so grateful for your presence and your uh, support. We also want to thank those who are on the Unity of Las Cruces Board of Trustees, our social media outreach, our helpers, donors, and people who tie, our anonymous prayer givers, never enough prayer, our musicians, our speakers, thank you, Helen, for today, your Zoom and YouTube and email producer. So there are a lot of people who make this happen every Sunday, and it always looks so easy from where we sit. Thank you for raising the vibrations of this universe through your prayers, your affirmations, and your visualizations, and for allowing the love and light and healing to flow through you and to others and to our planet. Helen, how about an opening prayer? I would love to. <laughs> so, as we take a, a moment, just center ourselves, becoming fully present in this present moment right now. Breathing in the air. Noticing if the air feels dry or if it feels humid or if it feels cool or warm. Just no noticing that sensation of breathing the air and life-giving oxygen into our lungs, deep into our lungs. And that energy of life circulates around our whole body, energizing and enlivening all the cells of our body. Helping us remember that every cell is divine and every cell is enlivened by spirit, guided by spirit. So as we settle in, breathe, and relax and let go, we find a deep peace, a calm, an oasis, an oasis where we commune with spirit, where we know we can connect with that oasis of faith within us that connects us with the divine. And as we focus on God, we can focus on all of those super conscious spiritual qualities of our higher vibration, our higher consciousness when we are consciously connected with the divine. And it's through the divine that all of the faculties or powers of the body are activated, are filled with light and are expanded into more and more expression in our daily lives. We align our thoughts with the divine. We align our expressions with the divine. We align our words with divine mind. And we align our words in truth. And from this place, we can move out into the world. We can share a healing light, a healing consciousness, a higher consciousness. And we can express our superpowers as the divine gifts from God that they are. So in all of this, we are so blessed. And we know that God is good all the time, everywhere, always, everywhere present. So in this awareness, we are grateful and say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now it's time for our daily word. And please welcome Dave Aidy. Hello, friends. This is your daily word for Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. And that word is faith. The affirmation for today, my faith keeps me focused on God. I may not be able to control what happens around me, but I am always free to choose what happens within me. My perception determines my experience. I begin with faith. 
I choose to see the vibrant wholeness that is present even during illness. I open my heart and mind to the harmony that I know is possible even in the midst of apparent discord. When my needs appear greater than my resources, I remind myself all supply springs forth from the inexhaustible well of divine substance. I am reassured by remembering all situations are temporary and God is greater than every circumstance. Through my faith, I align my thoughts with the divine and believe in this truth that sets me free. Our scripture for the day is from Luke 17, verse 6. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the seed, and it would obey you. Our affirmation together, please. My faith keeps me focused on God, and so it is. And Thank you, Dave. And now we have our affirmation for unity with Jane Ray. The affirmation for unity. Guided by infinite love and wisdom, and with God as our source, we now behold unlimited possibilities as unity of Las Cruces grows and prospers. And thank you for that affirmation for unity of Las Cruces. So now I move into the talk. And the talk title, as you heard, is What is Your Superpower? So the inspiration for this talk came initially from a period in my life a few years ago. Uh, we're actually coming up to the um, five-year anniversary of me falling and breaking my neck. That was Memorial Day weekend. So when I was recovering from that, um, I was on Facebook and I found a site for the um, broken neck uh, um, community, support community. And one of the things that really came to mind was uh, this concept of a superpower. So if we go to the next slide, And then the next slide. Thank you. So uh, there was a slogan, it was a t-shirt saying, I survived a broken neck, what's your superpower? And it actually began to sort of bring into my consciousness of, wow, this was no small thing. You know, not only to survive the original accident and the hospitalization and everything, but to, to actually sort of survive and then begin to thrive through that whole recovery process. And then um, in preparing for this talk, again, I, I search on Google and, and I'm searching for power, superpower, and a whole bunch of things come up that are not related to this talk. Uh, but one of them was quite interesting. It was, um, I'll be sharing the story of this. And I discovered another superpower that I have that I had no idea that I actually uh, have a superpower in that area too. And it really reinforced this, this concept of choosing how we perceive the external world. And in this story, I could have gone to victim role, I could have gone to it's not fair, I could have gone to a whole range of things, but I immediately was able to go to, wow, I've been through all of that, I didn't know it, and I'm still a superwoman survivor and a thriver, not a victim. So I, I love this next slide, and it really, this applies to all of us. Uh, we may all have had periods of darkness, periods where, um, especially if we uh, weren't born into unity, we may perceive the external situation as, as dark, as scary. And I love this. She was not the darkness she had endured, or we are not the darkness we have endured. We are the light that refused to surrender. And that whole concept, um, it just brings hope, brings um, 
purpose, brings vision, brings light. And so when I was reflecting on the dark night of the soul, the physical and mental pain, but not identifying with it, rather allowing it and focusing on the light, being the light. So in any periods of apparent darkness, it's important to recognize our own light and the light of spirit, which is up to which we're always connected. It always comes through us um, as we stay in that connection with God, with spirit. It's important to recognize our own light. And it's also important to, to bring that forth, even at times where we may temporarily be in doubt or questioning that um, we are not the darkness, we are the light. We are of the light. We are born in the image of God. And therefore, we are the light. So every year since my accident on Memorial Day weekend, I have deeper and deeper understanding and can appreciate the gifts. Reverend Terry would always say, you know, seek the gift in a situation. And so I can certainly see the gift that the opportunity of the broken neck was just uh, an invitation to return to life and to connect with my life's purpose in a new and deeper, more compassionate way. So now we have a story. So our next slide. Our uh, next slide. It might look a little bit uh, innocuous. Um, don't know what that looks like to you, but this is a place called Windscale. It's on the west coast of England, northern England. It's on the coast and um, it's a place where uh, it was originally called Sellafield, and it was the original old site for making TNT manufacturing during the Second World War. It was renamed and remodeled as Windscale, and it became the United Kingdom's first nuclear power plant. And there's a little bit of history of that, that having had the British and the American people um, collaborating on nuclear developments at Los Alamos, uh, Britain wanted to continue that and wanted to show that, I'm using a different word of superpower, that it was a, still a power in the world and wanted to be aligned with, um, and if we can go back to the slides, I can, um, if, so it wanted to be aligned, you know, with, with America. Um, so if you look at that site, those two things are almost in the middle or middle left of the screen. Those are called piles. I call them chimneys. And you can see that there's smoke coming out of the apparently smaller one that's a little bit further in the distance. That is um, pile number one. And this whole thing was converted to nuclear power from being t a TNT factory. It was converted very quickly. It was a hurried process. And as I saw in one of the uh, documentary reports, it's really not a good idea to do a hurried process when you're dealing with nuclear power and nuclear power in its infancy. So in October 1957, there was a fire in one of those two chimneys. Um, and it was the pile number one that you see that is there's smoke coming out. It almost looks like a cloud. But the nuclear plant was on fire. And it put wind scale a hair's breadth from becoming a British Chernobyl 30 years before Chernobyl. Now, this isn't just sort of an academic thing. My uncle worked there. My uncle worked there at that time. And since we were only probably about 60 miles away, we as a family often came to Windscale. We'd play on the beach. We'd be, be there, we'd meet my uncle. Um, as Later on, as school trips, we would come again to this area, uh, not knowing that it wasn't necessarily a safe place to be. Um, so as I say, my uncle worked there and we had many vacations. Um, playing in the sand, camping, really immersed in the nature of that area. So, um, next slide, please. And um, I invite you, it's, I invite you not to engage in the drama of this, but in the celebration of, of two people that actually demonstrated superpowers. Um, superpowers in a spiritual sense. There was George Douglas Cockroft. Um, he had um, shared the prize, the Nobel Prize of Physics in 1951 for splitting the atom. 
And his superpower was speaking up when it really, really mattered. And it might sound like a little sort of double play on words, but he spoke truth to power. He spoke truth to all of the people at the nuclear power plant. And um, he, he was considered an outsider, uh, very much an outsider. Um, and when he, he saw that there were these piles, these chimneys, he said that there should be filters in to trap radiation. And he was met with great resistance um, because of the time frame, because of the costs, because of multiple reasons of people who didn't necessarily understand the full implications. And his superpower and conviction was to speak in a way that people did hear. And I don't think these are the exact words. I think there may have been a couple more expletives in there, but he says, I split the atom. If I say we're having filters, we are having filters. And they were known as Cockroft's Follies until 1957. Uh, at that point, the piles were supposed to have been um, retired after five years, and they were already two years beyond their expiration date. And he insisted that whether it delayed the whole progress or what, he had insisted as they were built that filters were put in. So they were put in at the top of these chimneys or top of the piles. And it's thought that um, if it wasn't for those filters, it, it was actually quite a serious nuclear disaster. But without the filters, it would have been a Brit British Chernobyl. Um, so much, 90% of the radiation leak was contained by Cockroft's filters. So they were no longer Cockroft's follies. Um, they were acknowledged as being a highly significant uh, contribution to mitigating that actual potential major disaster. And an another hero, as we see in the next slide, is a, a gentleman called Tom Tuhogi. He was a, an Irishman and he was the deputy engineer and he was at the plant uh, when the fire started and his superpower was the, the courage to face the unknown and the courage to act uh, because when they when they were in the, this fire situation no one actually knew how to put out a fire they didn't know that if they put water on perhaps the whole thing would have exploded uh, they didn't know but the um the rods were actually melting down and so something had to be done for cooling. So it has to be that spirit, that courage inside, that spirit to go into the unknown, to do what's right. He actually went and he climbed up those, that tower that was on fire. He climbed up to actually physically inspect it. And then um, they figured that they had to take the, the risk of putting Hoses. So he actually climbed back up again to put the water hoses down and start the water to cool from the top to cool that fire. And they did fear meltdown or explosion. Um, and he did, uh, he was exposed to radiation, but not fatal. But it, it's, for me, it's that absolute superpower, the courage to act. And for me, that can only be with the strength of spirit in, through and as us. Um, that he was able to, to do the action that he, he was guided to do and uh, prevent a meltdown, prevent a meltdown and explosion. The government, um, I didn't know any of this until this last week. Um, the government had played down the, uh, the importance or significance of the fire. They did ban the sale of cow's milk uh, due to contamination for a period after that fire. And they dumped the cow's milk into the Irish Sea. So it makes me think, no wonder the Irish sometimes aren't too thrilled by the, the English. Um, but, and there were fatalities. There were probably directly 100 to 240 fatalities that they say. But the interesting thing from my perspective as well, as a personal connected to my uncle, connected to the area, if we go to the next slide, It, it brings me to my, my second superpower. And uh, not only did I survive a broken neck, I've survived two separate radiation leak accidents because the Sellafield wind scale accident, we were in the, the heaviest radiation pathway with the wind flows where I was living. And I was only three and a half 
um, going on fall at the time. And so there was a huge risk for children, huge, huge risk for cancers and a huge risk for thyroid cancers. Um, and then in 1986, I was in a place called Wolverhampton near Birmingham and Chernobyl happened. And again, our government was saying, there's no serious risk, there's no potential threat. Everyone's fine, pregnant mothers are fine. Now at the level of spirit, of course we're all fine. Um, but this time I actually did take iodine tablets because one day I was in Wolverhampton, I went out, it was raining. And there were literally, it was fascinating. There were literally black, heavy drops of rain coming down. It looked like really enlarged rain particles and they looked, they looked black. And I chose to say take the iodine. But again, instead of going to either of these things, instead of going to victim or it's not fair or someone should be held accountable, to be able to choose to that place of, wow, I have superpowers. I have superpowers, the power of God coming in through an as me. And God is bigger, absolutely bigger, um, bigger than any of that, bigger than any of the, the nuclear situation, be, be it bigger than anything that we could see in this earthly existence. God has the ultimate superpower and God in us comes through us. So this for me was a um, really exciting and a celebration. So if we can go to the next slide. The uh, reminder um, is that, um, as we've already heard last week from Sandy, um, the faculty or power of power is in the throat. We heard this from Reverend Tanya and the reading this morning. It's the back of the tongue, it's the voice box. So I, I see this as the faculty is the power center, the power of power. And it's located where we have the power of speech, the power of words. And so this connects me with Myrtle Fillmore and her teachings the unity teachings of how important it is that we use this area of our body, this area of the faculty of power to speak truth, to truth as a power and to, um, I'm studying nonviolent communication where all of the aim is to come and speak words of love, speak words of empathy, speak words of compassion, and if you can just picture how enlivening that is to all of the cells of the body, especially in the area that that power is located, words of truth would be healing. And words that we speak anything other than truth is, is, is not so life enhancing. So it really uh, brought home to me the importance of speaking truth, feeling, feeling within ourselves, listening to our body and connecting with spirit and aiming and intending and affirming to speak truth in all that we do. So if we can go to the next slide. Myrtle always has incredible words to say. And she says, the secret of our power to help others lies in our refusing to be moved by the appearances and the apparent lacks that are reported to us and in our steadfastly holding to the truth of being, declaring the working out of the constructive thoughts and words we have sent forth. So she's connecting with power and the truth of our being and this constructive thoughts, these positive, um, that we, we send out that vibration into the world every time we speak. And so being mindful and consciousness that we're speaking truth, we're speaking lo love to the world that so needs it. She has another quote in the next slide we see. As you learn to see the fullness of God's life and love and power and substance in others, you will know that you need not pour out your own for them. You will have the knowledge and the light to call their attention to what they have and to prompt them to use it. So both teaching and being the example, but really it's important to um, enliven the power 
that everyone has within them. Everyone has that and the power of the love and the substance and love itself is, is our truth as we speak it. So it really is about calling forth this truth and wisdom in each of us. And no one needs my power um, as such because you, everyone else has their own power and their own truth. And that we help others most by um, enlivening the power in themselves. So it's unity teaching and it's unity demonstration, putting this into expression. Our fifth principle, we live it. And then David, uh, in the next slide, David R. Hawkins, he wrote the book, um, Power Versus Force. And he says, these are two quotes, power serves others, whereas force is self-serving. And I love the second one, the only way to enhance one's power in the world is by increasing one's integrity, understanding, and capacity for compassion. So in our next slide, see if you recognize who this is. Um, we're coming up on the, uh, for the one year anniversary of the, the death of George, George Floyd. And sometimes it may not be a situation where we're able to speak truth. There could be a very real fear of being shot in this case. But she had the superpower, I would say, the superpower to witness and to witness um, the courage to witness and video and record all the events with the police and George Floyd. And I reflected on she would have not have known the outcome as she started recording other than this was not humane treatment of a black man. Um, she wouldn't have known at the beginning of that recording that George Floyd was actually going to die to his physical body in police custody. But what she did was standing that superpower of courage when there is, was some risk to herself and probably still is, and that ability to then speak out in the court and um, speaking truth backed up by the evidence from her own video recording. Um, and she did that in the trial of the police officer, Derek Chauvin. So, you know, as we come up to that one year celebration anniversary, um, anniversary, there's a celebration of the good that came out of that. Not the actual act itself, but the good that came forth from her courage, her ability to speak truth and speak up and then the huge impact that's had on um, our country, um, on, on many of the racial issues have been brought into the light through the courage, particularly of that Danella Fraser. And the next slide, another example, I picked people who came to mind, who uh, in my mind had superpowers. And this is Mother Teresa, or Saint Teresa of Calcutta. And it appears that, I mean, we all know that she did great humanitarian work, uh, working with poverty, working with those living in poverty. And it's often written that she worked with the poor. And I listen to that and hear that as the poor in spirit. So she was there as an inspiration, as compassion, as a healing energy. And I did not know, um, that for many, many years, she believed that she had lost her connection with God. So as, as much as the Catholic Church will recognize her miracles, and um, which resulted in Mother Teresa's beautification in 2003, uh, she was canonized in 2016 as Saint Teresa of Calcutta. But for me, um, it's that superpower of continuing to do good works when she didn't feel her connection with spirit, with God. And I think we have so much of a gift in unity that we know that the divine is in each of us. And we so know all of the many ways we can connect with the divine within. And I'm not sure, I don't know this. Um, I'm guessing that in the Catholic faith, there may be more the perception of the God without outside of ourselves. And if that were to be the case, then there is far more opportunity to feel disconnected. 
and it's certainly true that we all could feel disconnected because we forget we forget our connection with the divine but we do know in unity the divine is within the christ consciousness is within and so when we go within through our spiritual practices we renew that connection with spirit with god so i see that her superpower was to um continue the work through her own dark of, night of the soul that appeared to last quite a long time several years and she too was the light even though that she may have felt disconnected we know that there's no separation and she kept doing that wonderful work of serving people who were greatly in need of her love her compassion her empathy her care and her uplifting spirit so since we've done a little sojourn through nuclear power and uh, racial justice and um, how it might feel to be disconnected from spirit, I figured we ought to just move into a more lighter note with our next slide. So, cuteness could be a superpower. We all have superpowers. And I know for sure that cats have superpowers. But just being ourselves, whatever, wherever we are, physically, mentally, psychologically, or spiritually, um, we have gifts, and we have gifts that we can demonstrate as a superpower. Um, the good news today, the photographer, using a superpower of vision and a humanitarian insight into the sentience of all beings, he's using his superpower to show the beauty of the endangered species that we love, especially the lions, they so love lions. And we know that a superpower is a spiritual quality. It comes from within. And I believe it is the divine in expression. How else could we have these superpowers? And as the master teacher Jesus walked on water and turned water into wine and raised the dead, and said, we humans are gods and would do as he had done and more. So as much as I don't see a need here in the desert to walk on water, I do embrace that whole concept of Jesus demonstrating what appeared to be superpowers and yet saying we too have those superpowers, those and greater. And the superpowers are superpowers when we connect with the divine and we use divine principles and we demonstrate those in our everyday life. So in a, shortly, we're just going to go to meditation. But I'm going to invite us to go on a journey within, exploring our superpowers that we may not even know we've had or situations that we have really brought light to that we may not even recognize. Uh, unless we focus on that concept of superpowers, the spiritual superpowers that are within us. So I would love to go to the next slide for meditation. And I'd love to invite everyone to just close your eyes if you feel comfortable and just go back within to that inner personal sanctuary, that place where we are cradled in the love of divine God. We're enfolded, we are protected, and we're illuminated with the spiritual power of the divine. And invite us all to just take a little journey within, reviewing our life, maybe going all the way back to age three or four or even younger remember that and just scanning some of the life events some of the life experiences not becoming attached to them not getting pulled into any drama but just observing being being present emotions come up we welcome them and we are present with them visions or insights come up again we welcome them and we ask the question what are my superpowers 
in my life, where have my superpowers been expressed or been evident or even revealed? And looking back, we can remodel and, and renew our memories when we bring this concept of our spiritual superpowers. Any times that we think may have been difficult or challenging, we reframe that in the deep knowledge and understanding that God is good all the time. And all of us are welcome, safe and loved in this experience of being spiritual be beings in a human body here on physical density of planet Earth. As we acknowledge that we are working in the physical density, at times that density may feel hard. But all we have to do is to just connect back in, go within, and be in that place of communion with the divine, and all is well. So we're just going to take a, invite you to take a moment in the silence. And I just allowed this question of what is my power, superpower? What are my many superpowers? Where have these superpowers been expressed? And acknowledging that in all of that expression, it is the divine coming through, in, through and as us. So just taking those concepts into meditation for a moment in the silence. And as we gently bring ourselves back to the physical, to the present moment, we might wiggle our toes, wiggle our fingers, circle our shoulders, just being fully present in our physical body. And giving much gratitude for the physical body, this vessel that carries us through this experience. And accepting and welcoming any new revelations that we have regarding our superpowers, regarding our expression of the divine in this physical realm, and regarding the importance of our power center in the throat area, the throat area where we speak, our words come forth. And seeing all of those words come forth from the place of truth, big truth, spiritual truth, and blessing, bringing our awareness to every word we speak that it may be a gift of love, of truth, of empathy and compassion to this world where many are so much in need of those spiritual qualities and those spiritual qualities in expression and demonstration. And for all of this, I give thanks and so it is.
Please join me in prayer as we affirm our prayer of faith. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment, night and day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. Amen. Our tithe recipient for this week is Unity New Vanfolds, where my mentor minister, Reverend Gary Kanye, um, really is a tremendous support and uses his superpowers of encouragement as we have ups and downs and uh, deep conversations and great mentoring. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to hold this energy of our tithe recipient in our hands and bless it and send it out to one of our brother sister communities in unity um, to help their community grow and as we know as we tithe it's all the circle the law of circulation and it comes back ten thousand times in beauty and love and we are grateful thank you welcome to unity of las cruces where we know that god is good all the time your love blessings can be made at the unity of las cruces website or on the weekly email. You can mail your gift, donation, or tithe to the P.O. Box. Your gift is given in love, goes out to the others in love, and love returns tenfold. And so it is. Thank you for all of your ongoing tithes and all of these many methods through which um, you share and give and tithe to Unity of Las Cruces for its ongoing um, mission and its growth as a spiritual center. Thank you. Next week, we have Reverend Pat Conway, and she's talking about your real power 
and it's also Memorial Day weekend, so I'm looking forward to a real treat as we hear her words on the power of power. The May speakers, as you see, um, I love those check marks. Um, helps keep me on track as to where we are in the month. So next week is May 30th. And please welcome um, the Word on Wednesdays, where we meet for the daily word and we share the daily word and we share our reflections and how it applies in our life. And we enter into prayer as well. So everyone is welcome, 9.30 on Wednesdays. And ongoing um, donations. Um, there will also be a, a, a new special community outreach project coming up and we'll have a bit more information on that soon. Uh, there's a new office coordinator admin assistant at CSL. And so I believe that the building will be open um, from 8.30 to 12.30. And um, so it, it's always good just to call ahead and check that the center is open when you're dropping off those donations and I believe it will be open now from Monday to Thursday. So um, we've been having, we had a board meeting on Friday and so we've been, we have the news that the Centre for Spiritual Living is opening for Sunday services on June 13th and it's, they're going to be following quite um, um, protocols, um, it's their building and their insur insurance, and it's important that protocols are in place, like continuing masking. Um, there may be an outside tent, so they're opening on, as I say, June 13th. And Unity, um, we are going to be sending out a questionnaire, so we'd love your input as to your preferences as to how it will look. Um, we'll, we're potentially looking at a service time from 9 to 10, and then a whole hour's gap with no socialization and then CSL will do their service from 11 to 12 noon. Um, so it won't be back to normal as such, but uh, we're, we're exploring this. Um, we've got a tentative date, but we really want your input before we move forward. So there will be a questionnaire coming out. And, and there is some light at the end of this tunnel in that we're beginning to see and imagine and affirm a safe opening um, as and when we can do so. So in the meantime, um, stay connected and keep our spiritual connection as we have been doing throughout this last year and more. And this morning, special thanks go out to Kay for um, the introduction and bringing us into the service and Tanya for that beautiful inspirational reading and Dave, of course, for the, the daily word and Barry and Max, I found that beautiful interpretation of the Superman. I was excited when, and delighted when I heard uh, what came out. And of course, Ken, for all of your work behind the scenes with, with um, the video recording and then the downloading, uploading, editing and all that you do. So, and also, of course, so important, all of you who are here and supporting and holding this energy and holding this uh, high watch um, in terms of spiritual vision for unity of Las Cruces. So now we will have the prayer for protection and our peace song. Please join us as we affirm the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as Creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other, each other in perfect 
harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment Let now. The moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Again, thank you all for joining today and let's go out into the week willing and able to demonstrate all of our superpowers, our spiritual superpowers. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful, yes. Helen. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you.